Hello, brother, sewing and crafting family. Angela Wolf here, brother brand ambassador, and we have a fabulous show for you today. But before we get started, say hi, say where you're from. We are streaming on Brother Sewing YouTube and Facebook pages, and we can see all your comments. Although Wendy and I have pre recorded this, we are in the chat. So chat away. <laughs> all right. So Wendy Chow's on here. You've seen her before. She is an amazing quilter. She's working on another book, actually, I think. I'm not sure if it's out yet. I'll have to check with her. But wait till you see this apron. This is a must have for this summer. Wendy, how are you? Hello, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Happy summer at your end and my end. I'm just so happy. It is summer. But um, yeah. I was mentioning a little secret of what you're working on today. Are you wearing it? Is that what yes, you're doing? I am. I am wearing it. We are making a quilted reversible which uh you could put on the other way this is the other side so you can flip it the other way a reversible quilted apron and there's a nice cute little pocket at the front as well oh my gosh that is so cute well before we get started there might be some new people joining us that haven't seen you on brother's show before so i mentioned a little is your new book out yet or are you working on a new book i can't um, remember so the third book is going to be coming out soon it is called First words with cute quilted friends. It's a little bit different than my previous two books. Um, so with this third book, it's a more of a pictorial book. Um, all the pictures are done with foundation paper piecing, which we actually did that once uh, on one of our brother lives as well. I demonstrated how to do that. Um, so it's a piecing technique and quilting. And yeah, so I did uh, all the illustrations there and it's a children's first words book. So um, it's a nice little addition if you're making a baby quilt for someone. Oh, this sounds fantastic. So maybe next time you're on, it'll be out and we can tell everyone where to get it. In the, meantime, <laughs> in the meantime, I'll let you guys know where you can find her, but uh, let's get started because I'm looking forward to doing this apron. This is so cute. Yeah, so um, the apron, the instructions are already um on the brother stitching social uh blog already so um i've actually kind of like fast forward a little bit of the bits and pieces here um just so that we can get through all the content today um so if you do um miss any sort of the steps that i talk about or maybe if you aren't sure um you could go back as well as uh it includes all the measurements as well as the tools that you need to create this. Um, so, so far what I've done um, to kind of fast forward the time or the steps is I've done the, I've done the quilted sandwich, um, which is, a, this is the front piece of the, uh, the apron, which you'll see here. Um, what I've done is slightly different. You can see that I've pieced different um, bits of fabrics here. Um, these are just sort of leftover scraps of bits of scraps, larger scraps from my previous projects. Uh, and that's something you could do as well. So as long as you combine all the bits and pieces to equate to the uh, required size for the uh, project, I think this is, um, I think it's like 34 by 27 inches. And generally with this apron as well, it's fit for pretty much like any adult size really, so male or female. Um, so yeah, so we skipped and fast forwarded that quilt sandwich. The quilt sandwich is a little bit different uh, for this particular project. So usually when we talk about quilt sandwiches in a quilt project, we talk about um, the quilt top, the batting and the back, which is in this case, but uh, we're doing two layers. So it's the batting and the quilt top in this case. And you'll see why in a little moment uh, as to why. Um, and I also fast forwarded to the point where we've done this little front pocket here. So this is a quilt sandwich or like imagine this is like a tiny quilt and I did the quilt sandwich here and then binded it. And if you're not sure how to bind as well, we have the video demonstration on how to do that on a previous live as well for, with me. Alrighty, so I'm going to switch over to the to my desk and you'll see what are the first kind of few steps that uh, we do when we for this particular project. Okay, so um, at the first section of this project or this tutorial, you're asked to print out 
this template. And the template is a free template. It's the link is um, in the blog tutorial. And what you do is when you print it out uh, before you actually start cutting it and piecing it together, um, make sure that the printer settings is correct. Um, so you make sure that the printer scale setting is set at 100 and then you get your um, quilt ruler or a ruler that has that measures one inch or inches and you just make sure that that test block here that says test block inch one um, measures actually to be one inch um, otherwise it's not going to be in proportion to all the other me measurements that you're going to find uh, throughout the project anyway so I've printed these two templates out, which is awesome. And then what I'll do is I'll cut on the dotted line here and you cut on the dotted line here. And then just imagine once I've done that, you lay this over on top. So I might just cut this one side here, just to give you an idea. And then you lay this piece on top and then you get a, tape um, and then tape that together and then afterwards you cut a, along the solid line here and I have prepared the template already so we're going to fast forward and this is how it looks like when you piece these two together and cut on the solid line so basically what this is going to be is the template to determine where that sort of arch or where that sort of armpit goes for the apron. So now that we've done that, we've prepared the paper templates, it's all good to go. We are going to bring in that quilt top or that quilt sandwich, that two layer quilt sandwich that I was talking about. So I'll bring it over here. And then, so this is the top end. So the shorter, the shorter end goes at the top here and then the longer ends go along the sides. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw, use this template and then draw in that arch. And we're gonna draw on both sides. So you can kind of imagine that. So I'm gonna grab, do this. So make sure the points are lined up with the, the top and the side here. And you could grab a pin and pin it here as well in place so it doesn't move about while you cut. So I'm gonna just grab a couple of pins. If you have pattern weights, this is also a, um, they come, they, they, they'll come in handy here as well. So it's another- Hey Wendy, just idea. keep your head behind you just a smidge. There you go, perfect. Okay, cool, sorry, my <laughs> bad. Looks great though. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Thanks for, keeping, thanks for being my second set of eyes. <laughs> All right, and then what we then do now is get a fabric marker and you just follow the curve and then draw it. And then I'll just undo that. So I did my first curve. And then now we just turn the template over to the, uh, flip it over. And then we're gonna do the other side now. So we're gonna match these, the top and bottom of these left, um, top and left. I was gonna say top and, I was gonna say top and right. <laughs> Okay, and then just carefully pin this in place. All right, that looks good. And then get a marker and just trace. Angela, do you have a favorite fabric marker? you like to use you know i end up using taylor's chalk a lot that seems to be my go-to because i always have it sitting here in many different yeah. colors and that seems to be my go-to your go-to yeah i recently discovered this one and i really like how i can apply heat to it and then 
the fabric marker disappears with the heat, which is really neat. I like that uh, too. Yeah. All righty. So now that I've traced the two curves, um, I'm going to get a pair of fabric scissors and then just cut along that line there. Oops, I dropped my pen, but that's okay. We'll sort that out later. So you cut along the line. All right, so that's done. And with this sort of scrappy sandwich as well, you could save that and then maybe you could use it as a coast, turn it into a coaster. You'll just have to need, uh, you'll just have to add the quilt back. All right, there we go, we're done. So now that we've done this bit, so you can kind of visualize the apron at the front. We are now going to find it the center of this apron. And we're going to try and find the placement of, um, determine the placement of the front pocket. Um, so let me just double check how far down do I need to measure from the top? I think it was. Thirteen inches from the top. So, okay. So let me grab the ruler that I had. So we're going to figure out the center of this apron. Just watch your hey, Wendy. Watch your head oh, again. My head. There you yeah. go. I know you need longer <laughs> arms, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. So this is probably about the center here, and then we're going to measure thirteen inches from the top of that apron and I'm going to grab my fabric pen that I dropped on the floor and mark 13 inches from there and this is where it's going to uh, indicate where I am going to place the front pocket so I'll line that line up with the top edge of this and then sort of centralize it this front pocket so I know that the front pocket is eight by 12 inches. So this is the center part of the, the, uh, the front pocket. So now I'm going to pin this in place now that I've figured it out. Grab my pins. And when you're sewing the front pocket, you wanna sew the right, bottom and left edges. You also may want to attach a walking foot attachment. Um, I'm going to use my uh, Move It Digital dual feed, especially around um, uh, here, just because we are going to be sewing through multiple layers of fabric with this binding and the batting. All right, so I'm gonna quickly adjust the camera to so you could see the sewing machine. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Sorry, Wendy, um, I just got, I'm watching your apron and I'm like, I think she said she's moving. <laughs> yeah, so, so I'm moving. That so you all don't get seasick. Uh, you can leave your comments and questions. Wendy and I are in the chat today. And uh, is this the cutest project ever? I absolutely love this. I was thinking, I have a couple of older quilts. Not, I, I just received a couple, a new one, a beaut, not a couple, one beautiful new one uh, recently last year. I'm not going to cut that one up. <laughs> Sharon <laughs> Bethel, that was a gorgeous one. But this would be such a great idea. And you can find a lot of these in secondhand shops too. What a great way to find fabric like that. Yeah, you could. Yeah. And it's also good use. What I'm doing here with this more of a patchwork style is actually a really good use of, um, good use of like just random bits of fabric that you have left so this is just um these fabrics here they're just from a fat quarter bundle and i was making these wine tote bags quilted wine tote bags and 
um, I had just like a bunch of bits left. So I didn't know exactly what I'm going to do with it. So um, yeah, I just decided to piece these uh, together to create a larger piece of fabric. And honestly, sometimes I do that this, this sort of style um, with the quilt backs as well. That's right. a great idea. Yeah, it, like it's so easy to accumulate so much, um, just so much scraps in the stash. And sometimes I just, just such a struggle to try and figure out, um, you know, what's, what could you do with it? All right, so I've brought, I'm set up the machine. I've got my uh, walking foot attached. And now I'm going to sew this in place. So I've got this pinned. And I'm just going to start a little bit um, before the, um, the, the uh, pocket. I'm going to press the foot down, needle down. I also adjusted the stitch length to be uh, 0 0.3, uh, not 0 0.3, 3 .00, um, millimeters, um, just because we're just going through a lot of uh, a lot of layers. So I'm going through that. Um, and then remember to reverse stitch at the start and end of the uh, seam. So I'm actually going to follow um, this sort of where uh, the stitch here along the binding as a guide. I'm just going to reverse stitch a couple of stitches at this corner. And then I'm going to pivot and then lower the presser foot again and stitch. All right, so reverse stitch a couple of times. And lift. And then when you get towards the end of this pocket here, um, I like to sort of do a couple of stitches a um, little after the pocket just to make sure that it's really enforced um, onto the apron. So I'll do reverse again. And tuck. And because it's a pocket, I like to do another sort of uh, stitch that runs parallel, just so that this sort of stops flip, flipping up, but also just for that additional enforcement. So if you've got something really heavy in the pocket, um, at least it's got some a bit more stability there. So I'm going to flip it around, and we'll just do the same thing again. So remember to reverse stitch at the start. All right, and away we go. All right, and then reverse stitch at the corner. And then lift up, pivot, and lower the press foot down, and then continue sewing. Oops. That's a little bit the corner and then pivot. So we're almost there. One more seam or one more side to go. We're nearly there. Reverse stitch. Let's do a little bit more again and cut. All right, so you can see that the pocket's done, it's nicely secured, and then you have that top bit opening so you can slide things in there. All right, so I'm gonna remove this from the machine 
And I'm actually going to go back and readjust my camera again so you guys don't get seasickness or maybe motion sickness in this case. <laughs> motion sickness. <laughs> By the way, um, I was just looking at that thinking, okay, for those that don't quilt, well, you should start because this is really fun. You make it look so easy, but I'm thinking I've got a couple old placemats <laughs> that would be perfect yeah. to use as a pocket. <laughs> I mean, that, I mean, even just small projects is always a great place to start off with. So like placemats or like coasters, they just make oops, it sorry. really, oh, sorry, I'm still, yeah, <laughs> just a little slow here today. <laughs> Oh, it's looking good. Yeah, so leave your comments. I'm so you all can't see like the other videos that I'm like, I see her on the chair fixing the camera. Uh, I get the best view, Wendy. Don't fall off that chair. <laughs> I know. I, I need to get your setup because your setup is really, really professional. I'm sure you don't need to, to like go up and down on a stool. <laughs> okay, so that's done. Um, it looks so great. You could see, yeah, so this is the top, which you can kind of see, and then the bottom. So nothing too exciting happening at the bottom. But yeah, so we've done the pocket now. And if you really wanted to, if you want to do an extra compartment, you could always sew um, along the middle here and then do an extra compartment. So if you want to do a separate pocket or separate your phone, like that's another option there. Um, but I'm just going to do the one. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to grab the back piece of the apron. I'm going to grab this. So again, I did this sort of scrappy kind of look. All right. And I'm going to grab this. And so what you do is you identify the top part of the bag. Um, so I've just kind of picked this random one, random bit. They're all, I think that's the top. <laughs> and then um, I'm going to lay over the um, the quilt top or like the uh, the other part of the, um, or the quilt sandwich of this apron. And I'm just going to line up the top here with that and the sides. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a couple of pins in place so that it doesn't move around when I am going to trace the um, the armpit area for the bag because I'm going to cut that bit in a moment. Oops, I've got to grab some more pins for myself. Angela, you're a pinner or you use fabric weights? You know, I use a combination. Mostly, it depends what I'm sewing. For something mm -hmm. like this, I would probably use uh, pins like you are. I would just want it to be real precise. And I was thinking about getting fabric weights because sometimes I know that with pins, it can kind of create this sort of bump or groove on the uh, paper patterns. Yeah. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm using this um, sort of quilt sandwich here as my stencil and then tracing out the, um, the armpit area for the back. I should have lined this a little bit more on the back, but that's all right. All right, so I'm going to remove these pins. Put the cap back on. Grab my fabric scissors again, and we're going to cut the back. Just keep your head just a smidge. There you go. I yeah. know it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. No. I think is it right now I'm standing up. Well, maybe I'll just sit on my stool quickly. And <laughs> hopefully that might help out. Because usually I'm sitting down, but today I'm like standing up. Is that better? That's perfect. Okay, great. All right, so I'm going to cut this armpit area. 
And you can save this bit maybe for the to make a coaster with the uh, other bits or the other armpits that you've cut out with the front half of the apron. All right, so I've done that. I'm going to set this aside, but basically what we've done here, just to kind of show you. So this is the top half of the back. These are your apron, your apron armpit areas. And then this is the bottom half of the body there. So we're going to revisit that in a moment. And now we're going to attach the straps. Or, um, or pin these straps on for the apron now that we've got the template uh, cut out for, or use this as a template for the back of the apron. So firstly, we're going to do these side sort of loops. And basically what we'll do is when you wear the apron, you loop the top belting straps, which will go the, these two go up here and they'll go through these loops and then cross the entire, but I'll show you how that how, how that works in a moment. Um, but let's just create the, or pin these uh, loops in place. So firstly, we'll measure one inch from this top edge of the armpit area. One inch and one inch on the other side as well. Okay. And I'm going to grab a couple of pins again and we're going to fold this in half. And pin in place. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So fold in half the raw edges. You line that up with this raw edge here and place it under that one inch mark that you've just marked. And pin. A little stubborn because there are so many layers. But be careful. All right, so we've done that. And then now we're going to pin these long straps. And actually, I forgot to show you one step before that. And that's um, covering up the, or like if one of the, the raw edges on one side of the, um, the belting strap. So there's a couple of ways in doing it. Um, so it really just kind of, kind of comes down to what um, material the belting straps are made of. Um, so if you're using say like a polyester or like a man-made kind of um, belting strap, what you could do is actually grab a lighter and light up the edges on here, or you could use some sort of sealant and stop it from fraying. Um, in this particular example that I'm demonstrating today, this is actually um, a cotton one. So what I've done on this one is actually folded it probably about like half an inch or so. And then I went to the machine and you just used your um, maybe like a walking foot, considering that you're using a lot of layers, and then just do a zigzag stitch um, a couple of times over that area. So this is what I did with this one. Um, so I could quickly demonstrate that for you because I realize I had not um, done that with this. But before I do, I'll quickly show you where I place these longer belting straps. So what we do is we'll measure one inch from this edge of the top of the apron. So one inch. And we'll do one inch on the other side as well. Wendy, could you slide that down? We can't quite see the top oh. up there. So yeah, yeah, perfect. Thanks. Okay, cool. No worries. Sorry about that. Um, so what I did is I measured one inch from the top corner here. So one inch 
and we're going to do that on the other side as well so one inch as well whoops okay. and i'm going to grab the belting strap that so this is the enclosed edge of the belting strap so that goes on facing towards the bottom and then you match the raw edge of the belting strap on the long one with this uh, one inch mark and then put it on the right of that and let me quickly grab the pin and pin that in place so we'll pin this here and then we're going to do that the same with this side and with this side because i haven't enclosed this bit yet um, I'm going to choose this as the side that I'm going to demonstrate uh, how that zigzag stitch thing will work. Um, and I'll uh, just put this on the left of that one inch mark that I marked earlier. All right, so I'm going to quickly switch it back over to the sewing machine. Um, so I'll just need to adjust my camera briefly again. Sorry, I muted myself. <laughs> uh, all okay. right, I have you off until you just give me thumbs up. So by the way, in case you're rolling in, we are live in the chat today, so we won't be bringing your questions up, but leave your questions below if you have anything. Also, this is on the Brother blog, so detailed instructions are on there. She's giving you an overview now, but if you want to go back. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to Brother's channel, and you go back and watch this anytime you want. And if you're on Facebook, Share it to your page. That's the easiest way to find the replays. So, hey, um, Wendy, by the way, I know there's going to be questions. What machine are you using? What brother machine? Yeah, so I am using the Brother BQ3100. It's the top of the line from the Quilt Club series. Um, I love this machine so much, especially um, this um, So Straight Laser Guide. It's really cool. It's great for um, just sewing some blocks or binding strips without actually having to draw um, any guidelines. Um, so that just saves a ton of time. And I love this digital, do, um, move it digital feed as well. It's really good when you're trying to go through um, several different layers of fabric at a time, especially for something like this particular project where there are quite a few layers all right so now what i'm doing is i'm going to be showing you how i do or sort of enclose that raw edge on one of the um belting straps so I'm gonna thread this machine remember last time i had kept threading my machine <laughs> i don't know how many times i had to do that in the last one. i forgot about that <laughs> It was ridiculous. I think I spent more time threading the machine than actually anything. <laughs> All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it over once. I mean, ideally, I would love to fold it over twice. And then that way, I'll just do like one seam or a couple of seams over here to really enforce it. But it is really thick, as you can kind of see. So it's a little tricky with um, just a little bit tricky when you're trying to go through it. So I'm just going to go through one. And I'm going to use a zigzag stitch here. And I have the walking foot attached as well, um, just for that extra uh, guide. So I'm going to carefully put this down. Um, so the zigzag stitch I am using is the two steps elastic zigzag. Um, so it's if you're looking at your machine and wondering, it's the utility stitch one dash 13 and I adjusted the width to be a seven and, and the length to be one so let's quickly sew this away I might need to do this a little bit it's a little bit stubborn because we've got several layers So I'm going to go through it again one more time for that additional enforcement, but you can kind of see how it looks like at the moment. So I'm just going to do it one more time. So this is almost kind of like a cover stitch. 
kind of see that's how it looks like all right so I've done that now and then earlier we marked a couple of guide a few guidelines actually um, to for pinning the belting strap so we're gonna actually um, sew those in place before we attach the back of that uh, the I was gonna say back of the quilt back of the apron to the front of the apron so I've pinned these I'm gonna take this pin out and I'm gonna sew about a quarter inch away from the, um, the raw edge here. And really simply, it's just to hold it in place. Um, and reverse stitch at the end and start. Let's set these pins aside. All right, and I'm going to repeat that on the other side or the opposite side of the apron. So there's the pin here. Normally I sew with pins, which is really naughty, but uh, because in this case we are sewing with quite a few layers and picking it off. And reverse it. So I've got those two loops in place and now I'm going to attach these belting straps at the top. So this will go around the shoulder and then around your back to tie up. All right, so reverse. And reverse. Right, we've got one more to go before we attach the back together. So we're pretty close. Right. This out of here. All right, so that's that. We've attached the belt to straps. So we're really close to the finishing line. So I'm going to move myself again so you can have an overhead view of my desk. All right, while she's moving, <laughs> again, we just don't want to get sick. This is such a cute project, Wendy. I absolutely love it. Oh, and thanks. You make it look pretty easy. I just say very mm -hmm. easy sewing through all those layers. The machine goes through great. And I know a question that comes up quite often when you're on, because you mm. always use that digital dual feed foot, uh, move it foot. And everyone says, is it the same thing as a walking foot? And it's not. It plugs into the back of the machine and you can adjust it. So uh, it really helps. It's a walking foot goes like this <laughs> and the move it foot has that band on it. So it has a brain, I should say. You plug it into the back of the machine and you can adjust the tension, which is way different than a walking foot. So, Yeah, I find that even when I try to quilt with decorative stitches, um, it does make a huge difference as well. Like I find that the stitches are more evenly spaced out and I feel more confident with um, just playing around with different decorative stitches. Because um, prior to that, I would just do straight line quilting um, which is there's no problem with that, but um, you know it's just a little exciting when you play you, when you have more than two hundred inbuilt stitches in the machine. Like why not <laughs> take advantage of that, right? So right. true, so true. All right, we have a great view. Yeah, so we've got the apron belting straps attached. We've got the side loops attached, and now we are in the final steps of this apron now. So we are going to now attach the back of this apron to the front. So it's right sides together. And we're going to pin these in place. So 
the fun a bit. Right, so I'm gonna paint this. Just watch your head just a oh yeah. Right there. I know it's in the, <laughs> I right there. Sit down again. <laughs> I'm gonna sit down again. That might help out a little bit. All right. All right, I'm gonna pin this edge. I love those colors. Yeah, this is actually part of a fabric bundle that I put together for art gallery fabrics, like a fat quarter bundle. So I've been using this fabric combo a lot in my projects. So um, that's why I have a lot of leftover left in my stash. <laughs> yeah, it's been great. It's come in really handy. Um, so I just pin these. And when you're pinning, just make sure that um, just be careful with the longer belting straps that you had at the top because they can get in the way when you are sewing or pinning this last bit here. So try to make sure that they're tucked in so you can see these belting straps are kind of starting to get in the way. So you just kind of tuck it in, you can tuck it in in the pocket, the front pocket that you got here that you created earlier. Hide that in there. All right, so I'm gonna continue pinning these. If you, um, another tip for those long belting straps is you could probably like roll them up, roll the ends up and then you could get like an elastic band and then just wrap them up so they're out of the way. But with that front pocket, it's pretty neat. So I'm almost there. Lots of pinning. It's probably the most amount of pinning I've done um, on one of these lives. <laughs> but I must say, it beats re-threading the machine, even though that there is an automatic threader, which makes it really easy to thread your thread. So... I must say that's a lifesaver for sure. All right, we're almost done. Do a couple more. All right, so we've done that. Oh, just poked myself. Okay, <laughs> so I'm just gonna close this up. So we. Can... This is when you, if you poke yourself, you're like, please don't start bleeding on my project. <laughs> oh my god, no, no. <laughs> um, I've definitely seen more blood in. In, on my sewing table before. Um, I should actually, speaking of that, close the rotary cutter blade. <laughs> it's, for some strange reason, I always like, every time I change a new blade on my rotary cutter, I don't know if it's just me, but <laughs> I seem to cut myself with um, the blade and that is really, really gruesome. <laughs> So we'll end it there. Um, anyway, so this is, uh, we're now looking at the bottom of the apron here. And I've got my fabric marker, I've got my ruler here. And what we're gonna be doing is marking probably about like a six to eight inch opening. I'm just gonna do like a six inch opening. And this opening is going to be, well, it's gonna determine the start and the end of the scene. So I'll start here. And then sew around the apron uh, half an inch away from the raw edge um, and then I'm leaving that gap there so then that way when I'm done sewing around the apron I can flip it inside out and then press it and then I'll just do one more seam around the edge to kind of hold all those layers together so this is the final bit of this particular project so um, I am going to hop back on the machine and show you how that works so right, again, I'm sorry. Her... <laughs> no, you're good. While she's moving her camera, don't forget you can ask questions. And we are live in the chat again today. So this is a really fun tutorial. And a reminder for those that rolled in later, this is on the Brother blog. You can watch it step by step, follow step by step, I should say, and rewatch this video anytime. It's on 
Brother Sewing YouTube and Facebook channels. So, and she's back at the machine. Yes, I Here we am go. back. I feel like each time I'm faster at it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna sew about, oops, I'm cleaning up a little bit. All right, so we're gonna sew about half an inch away from the, the edge. So, right, just a little press of wood. And then, so I'm going to reverse stitch the first couple of stitches at the start and start sewing. And then once you hit the corner, same thing like what you did at the front, you just do a couple of reverse stitches and then we pivot and do the same thing again. So we're going to continue sewing. Might have to readjust it here. So remember, just make sure that you don't catch the long belting straps here. Oops. My weight's pulling it down. I should have changed it to the bigger tabletop. Um, <laughs> it'd probably be easier. What is going on? Okay, let me remove the pin. Hey, Wendy, what seam allowance are you using? Um, about half an inch. So All I right. just quickly adjusted the um, the uh, to the straight stitch left. I'm using that function. So my needle is all the way to the very left. Um, and then I'm just using this red mark here. Um, so it's about half an inch there. Um, if you guys do forget any of the uh, sort of the seam allowances or any of the measurements, uh, they are all on the uh, blog post for this particular tutorial and it's on the Brother Stitching Social. I'm just going to reverse a couple of stitches here just in case because it's the belting loop just for that extra enforcement. All right, so I'm at the corner here and then I'm going to reverse a couple of stitches and then back and then I'm going to lift the press foot up and then rotate and just take your time around here because this is where the curve is. And you may need to lift the presser foot a little bit up as you're going around the curve just to kind of readjust the, uh, the fabric position so you can kind of get that nice smooth stitch. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw, I don't need to just yet. Getting close to that corner again. So we did the first armpit area, and now we're going to go across for the top half of the apron. And again, you have to be careful because you've got a couple of belting straps around here, so you can get pretty thick. And I'm going to reverse a little bit here because I can kind of feel that belting strap there. So. Going. And then I can feel that belting strap again. So I'm just going to do a couple of reverse stitches for additional enforcement. All right, so I've kind of hit the corner. I'm going to do a couple of reverse stitches and then I flip over again or pivot. And now we're at the curve. So again, take your time here. around the curve 
right, so we're close to the corner. Get a couple of reverse stitches here. Lift and pivot. And then this is back at, this is the uh, right side of the apron now. And so there's going to be a little belt and loop here. Right, keep sewing. And reverse stitch a couple of times. All right, and then we're almost at the end. I am pushing all my stuff off the table. <laughs> I, was, I was like, what is that? <laughs> I, push, I think I pushed all, I think I dropped the rotary cutter, the pen. I don't know what's <laughs> next, um, but it's okay. We can, we're all good. <laughs> all right. As long as it's not the sewing machine, that would be terrifying. <laughs> so I'm going to pivot around this corner here. And then remember we did that sort of mark back here. That you can kind of see in the camera here. Um, so this is the start of where um, we've got that sort of six inch gap. So we can do, uh, we've got that hole to kind of flip it inside out. Let me just get this pin out of the way. All right. It. All right. So I'm going to take this off and I'm going to remove the pins. You know, I'm so lucky I have a cover on this pin box because imagine if I spill all the pins on the floor. <laughs> that, no, that let's not terrible. go. We don't want that, Wendy. We don't no, want no, you to no. dump all your pins. <laughs> no. So I must say with those magnetic pin holders, if that does ever happen, they do come in handy. Not that it's ever happened to me before, but um, one of my <laughs> quilting, my quilting BFF, she actually bought me a magnetic pin holder because it's happened to her a couple of times and she, that's why she bought it for me. <laughs> so she's very kind and very thoughtful. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to cover this pin box before I make any scary things happen. All right, so we've done the stitch around the apron, so about half an inch around the sides. And we've got this opening at the bottom here. And this is where we're gonna flip the apron inside out. But before we do that, we're gonna clip the corners. So let's get those nice crisp edges, but also we're gonna um, around the curved bits here. We're going to cut a couple of notches, a few notches here as well, just to make sure that this uh, curved seam is looking nice and curvy. So I'm going to, I might actually just do it from here. I think we can do that. Um, whoops, I've got to grab my fabric scissors. All right, so, um, so you cut the corner and when you do uh, cut out one of these corners, just be really careful not to actually cut on the seam because that would, you know, um, the seam can kind of undo. So I did the one corner there. And then with these corners as well, because we are uh, dealing with some batting, it is pretty thick as well. So I kind of like to also cut um, just like another angle here like that, just to get that extra nice crispy corner. So I'll do a repeat on here. Actually, I'll, I'll repeat it a couple of times anyway. And then, well, careful not to cut the belting strap either. So when you do that, uh, those additional cuts. And then we're going to do the notches and the curves. I might push this machine back just so you can see a, the desk a bit more. All right, maybe these guys. Oh my gosh, the thread nearly fell down as well. Another victim. <laughs> oh, let me move that. And it's going to be like another one drops off the table, right? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> if you hear a big thunk, you know why. <laughs> okay, so I've got this 
through it quickly, you can see it now, this is probably better. Um, so I'm going to cut a few notches here, kind of similar to garment making. So you just cut a couple of notches. And I like to do it like say every like one and a half to two inches. And remember not to cut it cl as close as possible to the seed, but not on the seed, because again, that's going to um, compromise the strength of the seam. So that's one side. I've cut the corners. I want to do it on the other side as well. It's a little bit messy here. So we've got some confetti going. Make it a little party on our desk. I'm going to put these corners here. Remember not to cut on the belting strap, so just be careful with the, those corner notches. Oops. So yeah, we are nearly there. These notches do make a difference. So the little extra work is well worth it. So, so we've done the top notches and those corners and then around the curves. So you've, uh, we also got to do it at the bottom corners as well. So don't forget about those ones. So we'll do the bottom ones and then cut an extra bit. Right, and then one last corner before we turn it inside out for the magic. Right, and then clip and clip. And just be careful not to actually clip on the actual apron as well. All right, so we've got this hole here and we are going to flip it inside out. So are you ready? This is always the exciting bit. <laughs> it's also quite fiddly as well. I almost feel like I'm always wrestling with the apron <laughs> on this part. <laughs> it's kind of like after there. I lined a jacket and you kind of get the whole jacket out, that little hole in the sleeve. <laughs> I know. And it somehow it magically comes... Um, like it comes out. So here we go. <laughs> we are so close. So we have these two long belting straps. So those, that front pocket does come in very handy. And then um, now we're going to turn those corners out. Uh, if you have a point turner, that's great. I'm just going to use the, uh, the sharp end of my scissors here and just sort of poke it out. All right, I'm going to take this out before it gets lost in there. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this corner here. Got a pair of scissors. Actually, I'll do that at the very end. I'm just going to put them all out first. We are very close. All right. forget how many more corners this project has than a cushion does. <laughs> All right, we are nearly <laughs> there. Oh. Okay, and then one last corner. Okay, and then get a fabric scissors and just kind of do that one nice little poke Again. Uh oh. Oh no. I thought you froze. Well, just for a second, it was frozen. I was like, no, come back. No. You gotta see <laughs> no, yes, you got to see the apron. Okay. We have flipped it inside out. So this is how it looks like. So this is the top half. I know this is kind of hard to imagine because it's on the side, but this is the top, look, top half here. You've got your pocket. You've got your sides and then this is the hole at the bottom that we had before and then I'm going to flip it on the other side 
and this is the other side of the apron. It's pretty neat. Um, so now before I actually enclose this hole by just sewing like a sort of maybe like a, a, about a quarter inch or just sort of edge stitch from the, the, um, the edge of this apron, I'm just going to do one last press um, just to kind of really hold the seams in place and also just the fold as well because right now it's kind of not sitting nice and flat. So that's why I want to do one more press. When you are pressing the, the sort of around the belting straps, just be really careful, especially if you are using a sort of like a polyester or a man-made um, material. This is the cotton, cotton one, so I'm not too worried, but just be careful because with the high heat of the iron, it can actually melt or kind of distort the, uh, the belting loops that are made with man-made fibers. So just be really careful with that because um, I've done that before and this is why I'm telling you. <laughs> so um, I'm going to grab my iron. I'm going to get this I'm pressing that here and press these in place. So yeah, just pressing it makes a big difference, um, especially this final part here. Oh, this iron is very hot. I had it on since the beginning of the video because like that way it's nice and hot as this particular step. You see that nice and curvy fit here. Don't worry, I am not going to scorch my fabric. This iron lifts up. So every time I'm not holding on to it, it uh, lifts up. So it's really handy for me, especially when I am piecing. All right. Press these into place. That looks so nice. Yeah, I know. It's always exciting to flip it the other way around. You could really see the uh, final project taking shape. So we are almost there. Just going to press this bit too. And this project is like a really fun, quick sort of, I don't know, half day project. Obviously, it might take a little longer if you're doing this sort of patchwork um, sort of look to your project. Do this last bit. All right, so we talked about the opening of this bit, so I'm just going to kind of fold it a little bit and you kind of use um, the seam from before as a guide to kind of like um, hide, fold and hide these raw edges. And we're going to sew edge sew. So then that way we hide those raw edges of that opening. Let's give it one last, last press. And we are ready to go to the side machine again. Okay, I am going to switch to a different, like a different thread color on the top. So it matches with the quilting thread that I have on the front. So I used this orange color. Might be a bit tricky to see in the video here, but I use this orange color. So I'm gonna continue using this orange color on the top. So I'm gonna change out the thread intentionally. I'm gonna thread the machine intentionally versus last time. <laughs> Everybody loves seeing that anyways, Wendy, because they love that magic button. <laughs> oh my God, it's so good. It's like night and day. I remember using my mom's old brother machine and it did not have that function. She actually still uses that machine. I She got that machine, I think back in 97 when um, she won the lottery. And then she, I remember going shopping with her after school and we picked up the machine and it was- She yeah, won was the all, lottery? Yeah, she won the lottery. And then she was like, I'm going to buy a serger and a machine. And she still uses it today. That's really cool. awesome. 
Yeah. All right. So actually, I started quilting on that machine. So it we yeah, it just brings back a lot of memories every single time I go back. All right. So now I am ready to um, edge sew this in place. I'm going to sew probably about a quarter inch away from the uh, the edge here. So I'll lower my presser foot, knee down, reverse stitch at the start. So this is the last bit of the tutorial. So very close. Reverse stitch at the corner here. All right, and then pivot, and then so a quarter inch away from the edge. Just have to, and be careful with those long belting straps because they can get in the way, and you don't want to sew it on the edge of your apron. this project because it's just such a quick quick finish so if you're doing like a last minute project a last minute gift these are great i know some people like to be really organized for the holiday season and start sewing in the, earlier in the year like in july all right just be careful around these belting straps Oh no, I'm I'm playing the bobbin thread game. Oh, the bobbin chicken thread. I always get that name wrong. I am going to actually fill my bobbin up because it's towards the end. So what did you call um, it? The bobbin chicken game? I love that. <laughs> yeah, it's I, I, I think that's the name. I'm sure the viewers would correct me. <laughs> um, but yes. It's it's always a danger. I know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna last. So I am going to quickly thread this. So I should have thread a bunch of bobbins before I started this. But it knows. always runs out if you're live. It's an absolute yes. guarantee. And and the funny thing is I normally have maybe like three to five bobbins wound up already, but then um I used up my last one. And not <laughs> the then. color you need probably. Yeah, I'm switching over to white for this one. Um yeah, I don't it's all right. Next time. It could be much <laughs> worse, like breaking a needle, which we I have done twice on a live. <laughs> Wendy, we have, it's so funny because I don't even remember those things, but now we're going to have to have like a little tag list, but it would only happen because you're live and you know, everyone watching, they love yeah. it when that happens because it happens to them in their studio all the time. I feel like we need to do like a brother live bingo card. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I think we need to make that up because I swear, like you said, it's either the needle, got a thread. Um, yeah, we need we need to we need to make this uh, these lives even more exciting. Not that they aren't, but a bingo game sounds fun. I'm sure that because you've done so many of these lives, I'm sure you have a lot of um, other ideas to include on that bingo card of ours. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna continue that corner. And oops, hang on. Let me lift it up a little bit. Okay, we're back in business. All right, so I'm gonna do this party bit. And if you need to, you can lift up the press kit a little bit just to adjust it. And you get like curvy bit. Right corner, so we just a little bit and then press back and then 
care for those belting straps. You know, we really want to make sure that they're out of the way. We are so close. You can see how quick this has come together. I mean, we've put together this front and back together, plus the pocket, belting straps in under an hour, plus we had a few thread changes, camera angle changes. It's a quick project. Make sure that belting strap's not in the way. We're at the quarter, we're at the last quarter. We are so close. All right, that's one little bit. We've got up to here to go. So we're very close. Okay, so the stitch and we have finished the apron. So I'm going to flip over back to my desk and I'll show you how you wear this apron. Um, and you'll see why I had those belting loops. So I'm going to quickly just move the camera a bit. Moving. Cool. <laughs> we Thank are at guys. the end of this tutorial. She's going to show you the final, but um, be sure to keep your questions rolling in. And again, you can watch this or view this entire tutorial on the Brother blog. This is so cute, though. Yes. Um, I maybe could see just... doing red, white, yeah. and blue yes. for like July 4th or the holidays, anything like that. This could be so much fun. Yeah. I might just do, if you don't mind doing the whole body camera, and I'll just quickly show you how the apron looks like, and then I'll sw we'll switch back to the desk. I've got the desk sure. set up, so we're all good for right that. On you. This is how the apron looks like. Oh, my gosh. That's front. so cute wendy yeah and then this is the back i know it's been kind of tricky to see everything on the the desk camera but this is how it looks like now i'm gonna go back to the desk camera and i'll show you how the how to wear this apron <laughs> i actually want to keep this apron now so i was going to gift it to someone but not anymore <laughs> okay so this is the back of the apron and I've got these two longer belting straps here. So what we're going to do is we're going to cross it, kind of like skipping ropes. And then we are going to thread the left belting strap, the long one, and slide it through the one on the right here. So you've got this. And then this is the right belting strap, the long one, and we're going to cross it and slide it through the left side belting loop. So it looks like this. And then when you wear the apron, this is where your head goes. These are where your two arms go. And then you cross this over and then you tie it up. And that's how you wear the apron. And the neat thing is if you wanted to, you can undo this bit and you can flip it over the other way so then you pretend it if you wanted to wear the apron this without the pocket on the front you could wear it this way and then all you got to do is just tie the back here you've already done the hard work of threading the front and back but basically your head goes there and your two arm goes there so this is how the reversible apron quilted apron works so it's super, a very neat super. yeah very cute project 
that's how the super it. cute project. I love yeah. it. I love it. Yeah. So and you're really, gonna really another easy. one. So now you're gonna have yes. two aprons. <laughs> yeah. And if you wanted to, it's like you could at the back here when you tie it, you can tie it around here, and then you could put tie it at the front here. So it's kind of almost like a belt. It's like a bit more right. structure. So it's a little styling tip for you with your little pocket. So, or apron, oh apron. <laughs> so, yeah. Wendy, really this cute. is adorable. Backside. Yeah. So, this is it. Super cute. Well, this was a fantastic tutorial. And again, we are live today with you in the chat. Uh, because we pre-recorded this but wendy this is adorable and for all of you that make this don't forget to use hashtag brother sews hashtag brother scan and cut if you're adding oh gosh you know they have those flowers i just went on the art sphere app yesterday they've got these flowers to go into the scan and cut putting a bunch of flowers on the bottom edge would be super cute Ooh, that would be really cute i'd love that can someone please do that like and, and tag me like i really want to see that that would be that would make my day. I think. <laughs> I think that would be super cute. Just like on the bottom edge, maybe on the pocket. So uh, by the way, for your belting that you used, and I know they can go to the blog and check this out, but for the belt, um, they could pretty much make it any length that they want to, if they want it to be wider or if they want it to be longer to have more of a belt. But um, the, fat, the belt that you bought, could they just make their own straps if they wanted to? yeah they could they could definitely do that i mean that's great if like for example if you've got any scraps um i think when you do like when you make if you hypothetically made a quilt and then sometimes when you square out the quilt you've got those long edges from the quilt back and you could use those backing fabric scraps and um you mean I mean, you pretty much done the hard work in putting the length together so right um, those would be the perfect uh for belting straps um so yeah That's so that would just idea. save time from having to go to the store and pick it up i mean it would definitely take a little bit more time but um there's pros and cons <laughs> <so>, yeah <laughs> Fun idea. Well, Wendy, it's always nice to see you. We'll get that little tag list. Let's see. I think, but if we ran it across all the ambassadors, rethreading happens every time. Somebody runs out of a bobbin. We should start having like little side bets during our live show. Are yeah. you going to run out of a bobbin? Yeah. I don't know. The number Check. of times. Gonna, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We need that. We need a bingo card. <laughs> we need it all. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's awesome to see you. Thank you for a great tutorial. And all of you, thank you for watching okay. Brothers Show. As you know, we are live now on Tuesdays and Thursdays at noon. And uh, we're happy to be back on Thursdays. So stay tuned. We'll see you next week. Thanks, Wendy. Bye.